you don't know your chords through a major key, very, very impactful thing for you to study that will make your life easier in a million ways, no matter what your goals are. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to chromaticize your chords through the key in a just a really fun way. This is an exercise that a teacher showed me, specifically this exercise that I'm going to show you that really helped me a lot. It was kind of a turning point with just understanding how uh, chromaticism can work when going outside of a key and targeting certain chords with something that's called an applied chord. We're going to use applied diminished chords or applied dominant chords. This is also secondary dominant or secondary diminished if you're thinking theoretically. And it's just a simple exercise up and down the neck that is just fun to do. It's something that's happening in music and chord progressions all the time. So it's really um, lovely to internalize this a little bit and have this exercise down. So I find it really helpful. The first thing we want to do, we're going to do this in steps. We're going to practice our chords through a key, one chord, two chord, three chord, just a major key. We'll do it with triads. Then we'll add seventh chords. That's step two. And then we're going to add chromatic chords in between going up and going down in different ways. And then we're going to do a kind of a double chromatic chord targeting each one. Just really fun. It sounds awesome along the way. I did a little version of it in the intro of the video. So let's do key of C. Key of C, I want you to know these chords, that the first chord is major, and I'm doing one, five, three voicing, and then one, five, flat three for the minor chords. Major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished, and then major. And I'm way up there, but if you're on electric guitar, that'll be easier. Otherwise, I also want you to be able to do this in any key. So therefore, to demonstrate, let's actually do it in A. Here's A major. 1, 5, and 3 of A major. Off the 2 of the scale is a minor chord. Off the 3 of the scale, going along the 5th string, is a minor chord. Off the 4 of the scale is a major chord. Off the 5 of the scale is a major chord. 6 is minor. 7 is diminished triad. And then back down. So that's, that's a core thing to just have really clear. And maybe you know that theoretically, but you can't just kind of walk through them like I did there. So the hands-on practice on the guitar uh, solidifies these things in a huge way. And I really rely on it to know the theory information at all. It's because I practiced it and I can kind of think of the fretboard. Um, now let's add sevens. The one chord is major seven, lovely. The two chord is minor seven. Here's the voicing for it. We're just using the middle four strings. Three chord is minor seven. In every major key, always. Three chord is minor seven. Off the four of the scale is major seven. Off the five of the scale is dominant seven. Off the six of the scale is minor seven. You can see the shapes on the screen that, that I have for you. Half diminished or minor seven flat five, same thing. That's what this is. It's a minor seven chord with a flat five. Okay, back to one. Okay, just being able to play through these. Seven chord, the six chord, the five chord, the four chord, the three chord, the two chord, the one chord. Okay, now let's add our chromaticism. So here's what we're gonna do. Before every chord, we're going to play an in-between note and a chord off of that in-between note. Okay, so from here, let me show it to you here. I'm gonna go to D major seven, the four chord of the key that we're in. D major seven, we're gonna go to, we're gonna walk to E dominant seven, four chord to the five chord, and we're gonna go we're going to have a chord here, and it's going to be a diminished seven chord. Check out my diminished seven chord tutorial. Super in-depth, all the way, fully outlined uh, tutorial on how diminished chords work, how to practice them, everything about them that is worth sharing. I put in that video. It's a very popular video on my channel. So if you're interested in diminished seven chords and how cool they are, check out that. There's a link in the description. But here for this exercise, we're going D major seven, half step up, diminished seven. Pretty cool, very lovely. I talk about voice leading a lot in, in when I teach, and that's just where you're very aware of, at the very least, a simple way to, to talk about this is us as guitarists being aware of where every note moves and it moving in a way that's singable and melodic. So this is moving up a half step and this is moving down a half step. And these two are staying the same, kind of cool. Now that creates tension pointing to the next chord, the applied chord. The, or this is the applied chord applying to five. So applied diminished seven to five or secondary diminished seven to five. Way lower on the list of priorities is remembering all those terminologies. I just want you to practice this exercise. 
Okay, so now we're gonna do that before every single chord. Simple as that. Here's the one chord. Here's the diminished chord going to two. Here's the diminished chord going to three. Here's three. And now you're gonna do the diminished chord going to four, but you're not gonna go up a half step because four is already a half step up. So you turn this into, really cool, right? Isn't it just fun to play guitar and like do stuff like this, even if you're just learning it and just listening to it? You are, we're, it's like music listening time at the same time as practice and play and all that. So three chord, diminished seven, four chord, walk up, diminished seven to the five, five, diminished seven, a half step up from five where everything is the same except for the root goes up a half step. I have a video all about how diminished seven chords and dominant seventh chords are so interchangeable and related. I'll put a link to that in the in the description as well. Okay, so five, six. Okay, now here's where it's not quite harmonically practical. It's not quite used, but we do it anyway. Here's the seven chord. We're gonna lead to it with diminished seven. Typically, you don't really resolve to uh, a half diminished chord because it's it's has its own tension, but we do it in this exercise. Six, six, half step up, diminished seven, seven chord, half diminished, turn that into fully diminished. Oh, lovely. Half diminished, fully diminished, and then A major, seven. Ah, so nice. Let's do that again, and then going down, this is how I was taught this exercise, so we're gonna do something different going down. Okay, so you go up, one, going to two, going to three, Going to four, going to five, going to six, going to seven, going to one. Ah, there it is. Doesn't that sound nice? So cool and, and just great. Even if it's just good technique practice, that's great too. Here's how we're gonna go down. To approach every chord, we're going to, let's practice it from five to four like we did before. Here's the dominant seventh chord. Here's the four chord. We're gonna play a dominant seven chord, this shape. Yeah, it's a bar chord. Yes, on this acoustic guitar, it's actually annoying to play and hard to play, but I try to use a little bit of the weight of my arm on it so I'm not squeezing too hard. Dominant seven chord, a half step up. There's theory behind this that I don't want you to worry about, but basically, it's what I will say it. It's what's called a tritone substitution. We're doing a version of what you can think of as five of four dominant seven leading to the four chord of the key but it's half step up and then doing this but all we want to do now is get the exercise down but no from doing this exercise oh interesting a dominant seventh chord a half step up from another chord can resolve down a half step to cause resolution okay so here we go you're going to create a half step up dominant seventh chord for everything going down a major seven, A dominant seven, the seven chord that's half diminished or minor seven flat five, okay? Then you do half step above the six chord, dominant seven, go down to the six chord, half step above the five chord, dominant seven, go down a half step, five chord, go down a half step, your half step above four, four chord, half step above three is off four, so you turn four do dominant seven, go down to three, Half step above two, go down to two. Half step above one, go down to one. Ooh, interesting, right? It's kind of exposure to this pretty advanced theory concept, really, but just in a nice linear exercise for ourselves. So let's hear it now. Here's the seven chord, to the six chord, to the five chord, to the four chord, to the three chord to the two chord, to the one chord. And that's the exercise. And that's those are the concepts. Cool thing to be exposed to, not just knowing that those things exist. Oh, you can put a dominant seven chord, a half step up above, ooh, neat. Well, let's practice it. Let's practice it like we practice a scale. Let's practice it up and down. Let's practice it in a, in a key. Let's practice it along a string. Let's get it down so we hear it, feel it, can play it, work on our technique at the same time, have this relationship with the fretboard that makes sense of it as well. So, let's go up and down the whole thing. Back 
down. And I'm just playing it in this kind of like rigid metronomic way, but we're doing a drill. And then from there, you can just be playful with it. Be playful with it. I just did a video recently on songwriting stuff I'm doing and I showed, oh, here's how I might map out things and be kind of more drill-like and then just be playful. You have this information now. So what do you do? Are you a, do you strum? Do you play um, finger picking patterns? Do you, what, what's, what's your thing? You know, apply it here. I'm in C major now. I'm just going through it, but with a finger picking pattern in C major. So I said we were going to do one last thing, which is double chromatic, double applied chord, double diminished, <laughs> whatever. These aren't official terms. But if you go, I'm in C major now, so the one chord in C major, and then I'm pointing to the two chord, and then you can go up a minor third, and then land on the two chord. So one chord leading to the two, up a minor third, and then land on the two, leading to the three, up a minor third, and then land on the three, leading to the four, up a minor third, land on the four, leading to the five, up a minor third, land on the five. Here's that again. Played with the time a little bit, but then just did it straight for the rest of it. But pretty cool, right? The one chord, bum, bum, two chord, three chord, four chord, five chord, six chord. That kind of stuff is in my diminished chords lesson as well. If you want to see that, there's that link in the description for it. Just how to move around and use diminished chords more often. But that's the final step in our little exercise. There's that double applied where you surround the chord. It's kind of like an enclosure kind of concept uh, to then target a whole chord. While we're on that topic, you could get even crazier. Let's go one chord, pointing to the two chord, up a minor third. And then half step above two, and then two. Whoa. Reharmonizing, making things dense, making things more harmonically rich. Think of how that could inform ways to uh, make this progression C major to D minor, C major, which I love the sound of, but what if you want to make those sevens? What if you want to. It's kind of like shows a little window into jazz harmony where it's just like, let's add chords leading to chords, leading to chords, tension leading to more resolution over something very basic. Stuff I'll talk about even more in future videos. So make sure you're subscribed, um, you know, how to make a basic progression into more of a jazz harmony and what the principles are under that. Some As a video I'm going to do soon. And I do a video at least every week. So hope to see you in future videos. And thank you very much for watching this one. And if you want a resource to practice with that involves this knowledge of chords through keys, then I have a chord chart called Chords with Color that is extremely valuable, I think. I think it's really unique and one of the coolest chord charts out there. Um, something that I made and put a lot of effort into and a lot of people reach out and say they find it um, really helpful and make posters out of it and put it on their wall. Shows a bunch of chords through a bunch of keys, shows major, shows minor, shows chord extensions that add color to all those chords to get a bunch of beautiful options. It's just really fun to play with, be creative with, learn some theory from, do some ear training with, uh, practice some technique with, all that stuff totally for free. There's a link to get that chord chart in the top of the description, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chords with color to download that for free. Hope to see you in a future lesson. Thanks for watching. Take care and happy practicing.